be this going to be one of the, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> hmm. All right, y'all, let's welcome in, welcome in, come on in the room. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be here and facilitate tonight um, for Black Singles Love or Singles Let's Talk, whatever you want to talk it to. Tonight, <laughs> tonight yeah. the topic is being loved properly. I don't know if you have or not. Um, I know I've had once in my lifetime, but it's been a long time since I've been loved properly. And when I say being loved properly, it doesn't have to be just in a you know relationship. Um, it could also be friendships or just any relationship. Have you been loved properly? Have you do you even know what that feels like? And um, our sister Cheryl had a post uh, a while back that started this trend where um, she posted um, you know little love love quotes, and she had that one up there. And the picture was a man holding a woman really tight, really secure. And the, the, the headline was being loved properly. So I wanted to get into that, I, you know, that, that image, that picture for us to really go deep into what being loved properly looks like to us. And even if you haven't, you know, what, what would it look like to you if you haven't? So we're going to jump right in, but you know me, I, you know, let's first, let's open up the room with a, a prayer because I got so much to go over with you guys. Um, I'm going to be like Marilyn and just pick one of y'all. And I love this woman's brain and her thoughts and her process. Ms. Cheryl, since you're the one that brought this time <laughs> to life, would you please open us up with prayer tonight? Ms. Cheryl. I am here. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank, uh, thank you for another day. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing us all together. Um, thank you for this platform um, that gives us a place to grow and share and communicate with one another and lift one another up and exercise our God-given gifts. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to lift you up in a mighty way. I ask your blessings over everyone that is here in this space, uh, those that are on their way and those that couldn't be here, we, we invite you here yes. um, as we wrap up this particular month um, with love and yes. with grace and with mercy. We thank you. We, thank we you. praise you. Amen. 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 Had that one, you had that one tear right there, Cheryl, just, just coming yeah. down. <laughs> yes, you, took, you took that long breath. I was like, I feel, I feel you. Ooh, he no, does that's, it. That's, that's, that's love. That's what being in love feel like. Yeah. 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 Oh. All right. So first thing I want to do is I really, really, I'm, I mean, I know we probably all heard this story. We want to, I don't want to beat it to a horse tonight, but I definitely want to talk about it because it goes right into our perception of love. It goes right into what we think, you know, being loved looks like and, and so we're going to talk about this Will Smith smack now. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. I'm sorry. No, let's not talk about it. <laughs> Listen, because a lot, of, a lot of people really think that, you know, what I've seen in the, in the comments and, and, and on the media, you know, a lot of us think that this is okay, especially in our community. We think this mm -hmm. is okay, that he was defending his woman and that this was okay. So... I want us to all take a breath because I know we all, I, you know, everyone here has their opinions, but right. I really want us to think bigger than what we, what we saw, Amen. right? So Faith, I, you lit up. So go ahead, Miss Faith. What, what's your thoughts on the SmackDown? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I was like, first of all, wait, let me wipe my mouth off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hmm. First of all, I mean, this sun is coming in. I'm sorry, guys, but um, okay. I was this shocked. Free, free, free to open your cameras up so I can see your faces. All right, please. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead, Faith. I was shocked because we. I was coming home Sunday from dinner, and so um, get um, my friend said, "Okay, are you gonna look at the Oscars?" And I'm like, mm, you know, I don't yeah. know. So got home, got in the bed. I look at my phone and it says Will Smith slaps Chris Rock. And I'm like, huh? What? Mm -hmm. And so I sent it to him 
he saw it because he was looking at it, but he didn't know I had sent it to him as well. But anyway, you know, come on. First of all, Will and Jada got their whole life out there. You know, they put it out there. You know, open marriage and all this stuff. They got it laid out there. So, you know, the platform that they're on, the notoriety that Will has, that Jada has, most of these, you know, award shows, you got comedians. All of them got comedians. They're all telling jokes or what have you. Um, yes, she has alopecia. My daughter has alopecia. My granddaughter has alopecia. I know how that might affect, you know, your, your self-esteem or whatever. But when you're so free to say what everything else you're doing out there, how are you going to, you can't get offended for everything because you got your life out there. You know, you got it out there. But anyway, it's all about Will Smith's behavior because he reacted based on what he saw in, you know, from his wife. Mm -hmm. But at first, I, and I, I didn't see it, so I don't know. They were all laughing. He was laughing at first and joking around with them, then said something about Jada. Then he reacted and he, and he saw her face, right? Right. I think he was coming from a place that he hasn't been healed, number one. Uh, number two, uh, he could have handled that behind stage. I think it was some other alternatives he could have done. He didn't have to show violence. And plus being, you know, the superstar that he is, you got a whole generation from Fresh Prince. Everybody's looking at the replay, you know, Fresh Prince all the way through. And we have generations that are out there looking at him and well, you know, he slapped and it should be okay. You know, because he is, uh, he could be a mentor to some. You know, you have some little young kids out there. Oh, I, I want to be just like Will Smith, right? So he has a responsibility, not only to his family, to his wife, but he has a responsibility to our community and how, how, he should behave his character and all that it's it, we don't have to start with violence yeah. you know and that's just what my whole thing is he could have handled that behind stage or whatever and I think um Chris would have um probably I can't say what he would would have done 100 percent, but he probably would have apologized he didn't yeah. know that she had alopecia and, and, you know, but anyway, I'm gonna let somebody else talk, but thank you uh, for letting me share my thoughts and I'm gonna let Absolutely. someone else come on in. Yeah. So for those, let me read, let me reset the room for those who just came in. We're talking about, you know, for a brief moment, we're going to talk about the Will Smith and uh, Chris Rock incident at the Oscars. And my perspective uh, on it all is just simply, um, uh, the, our community thinks that is, this was okay, that this was a man protecting his woman. And this is what, you know, black men are supposed to do. And, you know, I, I even heard one comedian, uh, what's her name? Um, you know, the comedian woman, uh, black lady, forgot her name, but anyway. Haddish? Yes, Tiffany Haddish. Thank you, whoever said that. <laughs> that was <laughs> yes. She was supporting Will. She was like, listen, that's what our <clears throat> black men supposed to do. And, you know, she was all for it. So I'm, you know, being in line with the topic, being loved properly. She's saying that this is what being loved properly looks like. That this is what it looks, you know, for us to, to have our man just smacking down people, no matter what, <clears throat> and protecting us. I don't know. I, you know, let me hear your thoughts on that. Is this what we want our, our mate to do? And Mr. Joe, I definitely want to have your male perspective on this as well, because I want to know, you know, as a man, is, is this a behavior that you would, you would do to protect your woman at, at any cost? If it means your career, your, your um, you know, because he has a major platform and this right. could all be affected by just one, one incident. So let me hear what you guys think about it. Uh, anyone, y'all can jump in. We're just talking. <laughs> Well, okay. This this is my thoughts on it. Um, is this? I have a saying that 
he that composes himself is better than he that composes a book. Meaning, if something can take you out of you, it has more power on you than you have. Um, I, you know, and I'm going back to some of the parts um, that Faith was saying, because I didn't know about it until the next day, to be honest. I, don't, I didn't watch it. And that doesn't mean it's not going to go forward. I just didn't watch it. So yeah, I mean, when I saw the replay, I mean, they were laughing. They were and laughing. Uh, when he looked over at his wife and she started, had the strange look, it's like the whole tone changed. But my thing is this, if, if you put your life out there like that, and openness and, and been for a while, sometimes you get back what you put out. And I'm not saying, what I'm saying is this, that to me, that was out of order. No, I understand, and, and we have to go back to what does defending your wife mean? Now, I'm with my wife and some guy is attacking. Now, I'm trying to defend that. This was not a sense of life and death. It no. was really not. No. And, 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 and to me, somewhere in there, grace would come in. Mm -hmm. And maybe you say, well, I didn't like it behind the scenes, away from that, because to me, but again, I think if, if that person is imbalanced within himself, not just from this particular incident, but for some other things that's going on within him. This may be the one thing that kind of pushed him over the edge. It could be. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, it could, that could very well happen. But again, um, not judging, but, you know, the things that clog your soul, negativity, judgment, and imbalance. Could some of that probably be going on behind the scene with that particular couple mm -hmm. that actually came to a head in a moment that when you lose it, it was yeah. evident he lost it. He lost and how, it. And I don't think it's one event that got him there. I don't believe that. I, don't, yeah. I just don't believe that. And, and again, to lose it to the world. On a night that was big for him, him. not just even for everything, it was big for him. Big for him, but it's big for him, but it's big for more than him, it's if big that for makes more. sense. Yeah. And, and, and that tells me it, it, it was some more issues there. That's just my thoughts on that, you know. Absolutely, I agree, yeah. I agree. This, you know, that night was big for a lot of uh, African-American people. Um, mm -hmm. We had the first African American producer producing it. We had, you know, some African Americans hosting it, women hosting it. Um, there was just, it was just a big night for us because the Oscars aren't very fair to uh, mm -hmm. us. So mm -hmm. that night was so huge. Right, that, right. Um, and, and I think it was Tyler Perry, either Tyler Perry or Denzel said it best that when you're at your highest, that's when the devil yes, comes. Yes, that's in. right. And right. I believe when I watched the replay, because I watched it over and over again, because I, I right. really thought it was it. I thought it was a like they were joking around, you know, when he mm -hmm. walked up the door. Um, but you can you can you can see you can see where the devil, yeah, devil that's right. big part in this. You can see yeah. where Will, I mean, he was even laughing on his way back. Yes. He, he was smiling on his way back from smacking him. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know if Will had an outer body experience. I don't know if you ever had that moment where you did something out of character for yourself, but that's what it looked like. This man was out of, had an out of body, out of character experience. And I think once he realized what he did, it was like, and that's why you saw those tears coming out because he couldn't even believe he did that. That that's was right. out of character. This is not a guy that we expect to go on around and smacking folks in the face at all. Right. He's right. had a long standing, long standing career where he could have done this over many other platforms. So for him to do this on one of the biggest nights, not just for him, 
but for so many others that have right, fought right. to get to that point, it is a spiritual warfare in my mind. Think right. of it as a Christian. You know, yeah. I don't, I mean, I'm not trying to judge him or anything. I don't even know if he, if he had, if he even believes in God, because yeah. I think I believe he's a, he's a Christian science monitor. Yeah. And I mean, with the lifestyle that he chooses in Jada, that's right. not, a, that's not our lifestyle. We, right. we live to one man or one woman <laughs> and we don't swing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So based on that lifestyle and based on their mindset, they're open. They're open to anything mm -hmm. and be used. So subject. And that's, and that's all the more reason. If you're open, you're, you, like you said, their life is an open book. So mm -hmm. how did this one incident with a man? And the joke was, I mean, if you really didn't no yeah. G.I. like I had to look up the movie like what's so bad about and then I saw the I was like oh Demi Moore when she was you know bald headed yeah. it yeah. really wasn't one of those jokes that was so offensive that yeah. you catch your breath like you know what I mean because they can go in some of these comedians can really go in on you yeah that's right and to me that was not it's, even a yeah you know yeah. so he didn't I make an obvious money if, if he would have made the August the, the guy that she cheated on him with whatever if she would he would have made a joke oh, about yeah. that yeah, I can see. I can she see that, that was that. Didn't she make that public about the man, the man that he she had a affair with? She put it out. Yeah. Yeah. Very public. Very public. Yeah, that's that's shameful. Anyway, I'm and, again, <laughs> and again, this is what I mean by love being loved properly. To to her, this is being loved properly because she's been in this marriage for over twenty plus years, and you know this is what she is okay with this is what they're both okay with but then it, but but it, they're not because if they, right. if, they were, if they were someone saying you rep, you're gonna come out in a sequel movie of another bald-headed person which the movie was an amazing movie you know the actor actress that he was complimenting her is a is a great actress so yeah. it wasn't yeah. like he was giving her any bad shame i, I just that's right it just blew my mind that that was that was the feather that was the feather right, that right, made me right. Feel and, and, so. and selling. One mm -hmm. thing I just saw I had a vision. Jada knows Will's triggers. Yeah, absolutely. And so for them to laugh and, and and he looked at her and she did a certain facial expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knew that man was gonna get set off like that. That's mm -hmm. right. 20 Absolutely. years and you don't know this man's triggers shoot yeah that was a setup and then too when he, <laughs> he was walking up there you know as a woman this is where again i had just i have to look back i'd be like babe don't mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. stop honey no you know what i mean like there was no she was just sitting there like <laughs> her facial you know expression yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you're not gonna stop him. Like you're not gonna say, "Well, no." Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. It's just everything just seemed very, very off, very off that night. Mm -hmm. But like, like I said, like what Denzel said about um, that, uh, you know, the, the, when you're at your highest, that's when the devil comes in. That's exactly I, right. I believe one hundred percent that that's what happened that night. Um, I pray for both of them. I think the situation yeah. is awful, awful, awful. Um, but again, you know, I'm I'm here to just try to get y'all to to see just different aspects of what we think love is. And like, yeah. you know, with Tiffany Haddish saying that this is what we we need in our community is for our men to fight for us. I don't believe that. I don't believe that's what we all need is men out here, you know, physically mm -hmm. harming to, to show us mm -hmm. love. I just think they no. need to be men. Just right. be men. That's you right. Know, whatever that, that looks like, but be biblical men. Open up that book. And, and right. uh, put that in there. And I do want to read a comment from Katambra. Um, she did say, I'm curious to know what he and Jada's energy or or conversation in the ride, oh, in the ride or at home prior to this was. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, go right. ahead, continue. I see your hand up. Go ahead and, and talk about that. Um, so yeah, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, Hello. My my yeah, that's my my that's my thought that there was some there was something that that led up to that beforehand mm -hmm. for him to just go off like that that may have been said or 
that may have just triggered that. But mm -hmm. also to me, it, it shows America how first off unprotected black women are and mm -hmm. how targeted they are no matter what level they're on. Yeah. Second, it also shows how unprotected black men in America are as well. Because yeah. if that was a white man standing up there, Will Smith would have never made it to the stage without, and if he would have made it to the stage, he wouldn't have made it off the stage without it being several other white men up there trying to remove him or do something about it. And then Ooh. thirdly, it also goes to show, like you said, that Jada didn't protect her husband in that situation because first off, baby, we at the Oscars. Yeah, I want you to get him. I want you to check him, but we're not gonna do that right now. Yeah. So sit down, you know, wait till <laughs> after the show, we'll talk to him. You know what right. I'm saying? Or, right. you know, e either, and even in my head, it's like, don't even worry about it. I got him after the show. You know, I'm not, you know, with me because yeah. I, I'm gonna handle it after the show, but, and I'm gonna have my words with him, but it's something. And that's why also I'm like you, I thought it was staged. I mm -hmm. still think that they were paid, maybe not necessarily by the Oscars, but I still think it's something definitely behind that, that is, um, I would say parallel to when the Africans were sending their own African tribe members to the slave master before slavery became something that was out of our control. We were all, we were the first ones to put our people in slave and sell them to the European people. And so yeah. it's something in that mentality, something in that range where, you know what, we'll do this for whatever profit, just because they're getting, I mean, my thought is they're getting to a point, and when I say they, they're thinking of us, they're getting to a point now where they're just out of hand. They're opening businesses, they're at the Oscars, they're rebelling, they're, you know, it's that, it's that we can't keep, our, keep them under our thumb anymore. We have to do something drastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's just to go deeper into that. But like I said, it's just an overall expression of how unprotected we are as a race in America. Because I guarantee you, if that were a white man, he wouldn't have been joking that terrible about a, a white woman. And if that were a white man and it was joke about Jada, Will would have never made it to the stage successfully and made it back to his seat. And made it back off the stage there. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I never looked at it that way. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if it was a white man, and, and I don't even know where security was. Uh, that just, yeah. I mean, it's a long walk to the stage. I'm really shocked at how that all played out. And I guess they probably didn't think that Will was going to smack him because that's out of character right. for him. Yeah. But once he did it, I'm surprised I didn't see any, any, mm -hmm. you know, anything coming off, you know, pulling him off the stage or anything like that. Um, but yeah, Miss Marilyn has her hand up. So Miss Marilyn. What would you like to say? Wow, <clears throat> I'm I'm loving the conversation, and it's amazing how you know this this lines right up with our topic of discussion for the month, and it's called mending broken pieces. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't always see the brokenness in the heart of others mm -hmm. until it comes out at times like this. Yes. Um, I, I piggyback with Joe that I don't think that this just happened tonight. And also, you know, Katamara was saying, you don't know the conversation that was had on the way there, uh, mm -hmm. what they've been dealing with even before now, because if you think about it, you know, when people are living whatever type of life they want to, it's consequences to that, you know, yes. leaving yes. a swinging life and all of that, you know, it ain't, all, it ain't always what it's, what it's cracked up to be. So, you know, sometimes there's some inner pressures that are there. And I believe that um, this particular night that those pressures came out, but they came out in front of everybody. That's I don't right. think it was their intention to do that. Um, I do agree with the fact that um, I think we all expected more from Will than yes. to behave that way because we look up to him, you know, um, and, you know, just something about his character uh, even when the situation with Jada came out, you don't see Will acting unseemly. Uh, even when the situation with, you know, ain't by that situation came out, you know, Will ha handled that very diplomatically. So we, I think we've all got a, uh, a, a kind of a higher expectation, you know, that, come, that comes, you know, we have higher expectations from Will, but what we saw was Will was human, just like anybody else there that That's night. Right. 
Uh, another thing I want to bring forth, and I, I don't know if we have thought about this or not, but <clears throat> this was, I got a couple of things. Uh, this was one, a black on black situation, which raises another um, human era in our community um, that as blacks, uh, there are just certain things we don't do, you know, toward one another. And to know that Will and Chris had a relationship with one another. See, we don't know the mind of how he's thinking as a brother. And then you're in front of these white folks in here embarrassing my wife in front of all of them. And Will is like, I'm going to check you in front of them since you did it in front of them. Because yeah. if you think about it, uh, all of the things, the scripts that are written, it's on the teleprompter. Okay. And if Chris saw those things rising up, and he had his brother's back covering him. Those, even if he was a, even if he is a, um, a comedian, just some things you just don't say. You know, we we just come out of you know the um, situation with you know all of the Black Lives Matter, all of that. It, it it's apparent that that has died down also, and mm -hmm. you don't know how these things have really. Uh, spark the heart of individuals or whatever the case would be. So it could be a ball of emotions that's rising up in him all together. And for you to do this, not that you did it, but it was where you did it and who you did it against. Now, I do agree that Will could have handled him in the background. Yeah. He could have took him to the back and handled him. But sometimes that anger, when we got broken pieces in us, it's like... Yes, I know this nigga didn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's just how we are. Let's just be real. I know this nigga didn't. And yeah. so it's like everything is out the window. And my reactions are going like haywire because I already got enough pressures on me as it is. Right. And I'll deal with the consequences of this later. I don't even know if he ever got to the point of thinking about the consequences, <clears throat> you know. But I do believe that after Chris did what he did and after will did what he did that both of the brothers realized something's wrong with both of us that's right there's something wrong with my brotherhood there's something wrong with me protecting my community we already know that our sisters sometimes are not covered the way that they should and for you to put her out there on blast like that and and we all know that jada jada got issues okay mm -hmm. she does how many how many don't have those kind of issues but it's something about us as African Americans to where sometimes and and especially Christians I think we just fail to cover each other the way that we should That's just right. some things just should not be said you know mm -hmm. it would to me and I know we're not all in the same situations they are we don't make the money they make or whatever but to me that would be like could we had company in the room here on the zoom call and um Joe decided that he was going to make a sly remark about somebody that was in the room. And you don't know what I had been dealing with before I came in the room. That's and right. now all of a sudden, my emotions are out because you did this in front of everybody. You know, it's, it's just a little different. I think sometimes we as Christians even have to go back to think about how deep does your love go? That's right. Does your love go deep enough to cover your sisters and brothers and we check each other afterwards, but we don't check each other in the room. Mm -mm. And then when you come out with things like that, and then you're surprised that I responded like I did. Yeah, broken, a lot of broken pieces in our lives. And I think we have to think about it. I heard a gentleman say the other night, and I thought he was so on point. He said that when it's all over with, <clears throat> he said the, the two people that I love was uh, Denzel and um, Tyler Perry. Yeah. Because the first thing he did, yeah. they went to restore that brother. That's right. That's right. He knew he had to be out of character, but he didn't need anybody judging him at that time. That's he needed right. somebody to go back and restore him and restore him in love. Because right. he know he's gonna deal with some aftermath. I can only imagine all yes. of the tabloids that are out there, all of the tweets that's out there, all, everything oh, yeah. on Facebook. It's bigger than that night. Yes. And so yes. now well now Denzel is thinking ahead. Let me go over here and restore this brother. Let me go over here and speak some words in his ear 
because right. he's going to deal with the shade afterwards. And most of the time, we as Christians, we do it un unknowingly. We throw the shade before we think about reconciliation. Yes. And so that's my thought on it all. I don't agree with what Will did, but I know Will is human just like anybody else. And we all have a part to play with our actions each and every day. And we have to think about those things. You know, you know, be careful how yeah. you come off. You know what I'm saying? And really think about, just think about mankind all together because it's not all about you. It wasn't all about Chris. It wasn't all mm -hmm. about Jaden. It wasn't all about Will. Everybody have to think about everyone intact. So that's just my thought about it all. And, and y'all know I sometimes go, I go into restoration. That's what I'm looking <laughs> for. Because right. God can use any situation he wants to. I don't care what faith he's at or no faith right now. He might be getting ready to be of a faith right now because he's going to need it to restore his soul. That's so right. That's just, that's just my thought with it. Great thought. Amen. Yes, yes. Everything you said, I agree. I agree totally. This is so much bigger than that night. That's why I wanted to bring it up. I know it's this is Thursday. We we this happened on Sunday, but it's something that we can feed off of and and learn from because you know it's it's so much bigger than just that slap. Um, a slap is 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 one of the worst things you can do. You can punch somebody, yeah. but when you slap somebody, it's more offensive. It's more it it, it, it takes away. You know, it's what's the word I'm looking for? It is. It's like you spit in someone's face. Like it's just yeah. respectful on all levels. And for him to to slap him, it sent a message as well with that slap. Yes. So it's, it's such a, a a bad thing. I'm not on any one side, like I said in the beginning. But I just think that this topic leads into you know what I'm here to talk about is 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 the you know being loved properly. If that is. If that's a representation, if that's what we're looking for when we're talking about being loved properly, is to have someone, you know, defend us in a physical way. Um, you know, if that's if that's the way that love looks like, and their love is so different than what as Christians what we're taught that it's just unfortunate that you know, it just it's all it's all on front street. Everybody knows their business, so. Um, I, I don't want to stay there, but if anyone else has something to say about it, you can jump in. Um, let me see what's in the chat here. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I'm missing a couple. Tamara said he is human, but he knows better and he slipped in a major way. God knows the truth. Amen. Um, and then Tamara said, I don't take any side because there is no side to take in this event. Um, it's unfortunately going to be used as ammunition to, to hinder. And that's the problem that this was the first for so many of us to be in that room and to even have awards being, you know, given, accept, being accepted, being nominated. Um, there were so many different firsts in that room for us as, as uh, um, uh, African-Americans or people of color that it's gonna hinder that. And that's, that's my thing too, is that it, that slap, rep, that, that slap's gonna put a, a halt on the, the next person behind Will and Chris that's gonna come up you know, that has projects that, that are going to be doing good, are they going to be now nominated for the Oscars? Are, are the Oscars going to now put a, you know, rule that we can't be on stage? You know what I mean? Like, it's it's so big. Hey, they were talking about, they tried to get him out of there. He, they couldn't get him to get out of there. You know, they're talking about possibly taking the award away from him. There's so much that could happen that we don't know, you know, what's going to happen. So it'll affect um, the others. So I like, that's a great point, um, Katambra. Um, it's disrespectful and intentional disrespect. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Tamara said, amen. This may be his draw to the Lord and to have mm -hmm. men like Adele and Tyler who believe in the Lord can be example of unconditional love. That's amen. Right. amen. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, Shall we I, real I, quick yes. before you move on? I saw actually someone brought this to my attention and I found the video that there were people that were praying over the Oscars before it started. And it's a mm -hmm. video on YouTube and it's like 50 people that, that were, were praying. praying before it happened? Before it happened. Wow. Uh, near the red carpet. Wow. I don't know if that yeah. traditionally happens. I was going to say, is that I, normal? I don't know if it's normal or not. Just someone mm -hmm. brought it to my attention today. Yeah. And I found the video. It does exist. Listen, That's if we, we, everyone here on this line knows better than, than you know, than, than them 
that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So That's at right. the end of the day, there's going to be something good out of this. Like Tamara was saying, maybe this will draw Will closer to, to leading his family back to, the, to, to Christ because they believe in some form of God, but they don't believe in it. I don't know what that religion is that Faith was talking about. Um, so maybe this might be that that thing that draws him closer. And and the first, you know, Tyler and um, Denzel to walk up to him to give him that first initial, you That's know, right. hey brother, this 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 ain't it. You need to change That's your right. way. You know, this is the, so all things work together. If it means what is, what does it say? What's the what is it profit a man to lose his soul? Um, rich to will is very very rich. Will yeah. is very, very rich. And if Will loses everything, his wife, his his family, his kids, just like the book in the book of Job, if he loses it all, will this be the thing that takes him back to the Lord and back to, you know, to Christ? You know, who yeah. knows? Who knows what's going to come out of this? But I know all things work together for the good that love the Lord. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, have, I have no problem that it's going to turn around in, in, in both of their favors. I think in Chris Rock's favor, actually, it's actually doing good because his ticket sales have gone skyrocketed. <laughs> but where his tickets were like forty dollars a ticket, now it's like four hundred dollars a ticket because people want to hear him talk about it. So you know, it's already working in his favor financially. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And, All uh, right, Shelly, can I just say one thing? Now that yeah. I don't like. I know. I know. That's what I don't like. Don't try to um, gain you know, the finance, the dollars on, on the situation that happened. Well, he didn't do it. This is how we know, but you know, that's, we need to just, you know, cut it, let it and and move on. Shouldn't try to monetize, you know, your pocketbook or your wallet Mm -hmm. or something that was definitely um, not good for, Mm -hmm. for them, for us, for our community, you know, but um, yeah, we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I agree. This is how we are. This is how America is. So we just need, you know, it's all about the money. Yeah. Tonight, one I... Oh, Could I do one point? Uh, Go ahead, Shelley. Sir. You know, I'm, 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 I'm leaning towards, uh, this is a thought that you brought up. To me, it was a demonic spirit that took over him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I, I just believe that. And, and it only comes in when you allow it to come in. But when it comes in, it comes in and do what it do. It comes in and take over because, you know, you can see it. He was smiling, going, but even when he did the slap and came back. So yeah. anyway, I just wanted to put that in there. And I kind of agree with you that that happened. And maybe afterwards, it kind of he kind of came to himself somewhat. Mm-hmm. But anyway, when, we can when he got on. that when he got that award, I think he came to himself at that moment mm-hmm. when he started to cry because he realized, what the heck did I just do? Yes, mm-hmm. you know. But um, anyway, we will will and the, they're gonna be just fine. They're gonna be just yeah. fine. Um, so I, I've been I've been you know wanting to talk about this lady for a very very long time. Um, and I didn't know which topic to, to use her for um, when I first um, heard about her engagement. Um, I, um, she, she's one of my mentors um, that I watch. Her name is Lisa Nichols. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of her, um, mm-hmm. but she is, she is married now. She was, she was, uh, she's like the rest of us. She was single um, for a very long time, single parent. And she was, I don't know if anyone, you know, she was a, a plus size woman. So for me, I knew her when she was a, a bigger woman um, and she's now lost, I think over a hundred pounds. Um, and she's a motivational speaker, a very, very yeah. famous speaker, you know, all over the world, over everything. She's just an amazing, amazing speaker. And her story um, is, it's it's like mine. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure it's like a lot of us where, where, you know, she was, you know, single parent, had to do what she had to do, working two jobs, you know, being on welfare and, and food stamps and WIC and, all, you know, any government assistance you can think of, this woman was on that. And um, she she went from having nothing and turned into a multimillionaire and all through it all, she was single, couldn't find a man, you know, and not that she couldn't, let me, let me back that up. She tried, she was dating, but she couldn't find the right one. And the only reason why she could not find the right one to love her properly 
was because she didn't love herself Pro- properly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so my 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 thing tonight is that's where I am, where she is or where she was, is that I I don't know if I love me enough, well enough yet to where someone can love me properly. So we're gonna get into that. I'm gonna share a really quick video. I want, you know, with you know how I am. I love videos, <laughs> videos to watch because I want to y'all to get the, the, the snippet of what we're gonna be talking about. Um, I don't have a lot of time with you guys, so I wanna make sure y'all get the get the um the gist of everything. So I'm gonna share my video with you. Where is it? I thought I had it up here. And just let me know if y'all can see it because. Do, do, do. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's the I think that's the screen. Here we go. All right. And let me know if you can hear me. Okay? Hey girl, hey. Over the last few years, that's I've been sharing up. my secrets of how I built a five hundred thousand dollar a month. Lisa Nichols was once a single mom struggling to pay for diapers for her young son. Now she's CEO of a multi-million dollar business, motivating the masses. And her self-help books challenge people to tap into their potential to accomplish their goals. She's a New York Times bestselling author who has co-authored books like Abundance Now and Chicken Soup for the African-American Soul. And she's traveled the world offering workshops and programs showing people a blueprint to make their dreams come true. The world didn't give me permission to be here, but I didn't ask for it either. So some of you are still asking for permission. Hmm. And sometimes you have to stop asking for permission and it's just time to give the world notice. (laughs) So I just showed up to invite you to give the world notice that you're coming. Give the world notice that you've been here. Give the world notice that you played polite long enough. Now it's time to play full out. Give the world notice that unapologetic just showed up. Give the world notice that non-negotiable just showed up. Give the world notice that if they can't handle your light, that you're tired, you're no longer going to dim your light. If they can't handle your light, put on some shades. (laughs) from Nassau in the Bahamas. Please welcome Lisa Nichols to the show. All right, Lisa, let the world know. Put them on notice, Lisa. I love that. I love that message. So here's the deal. Full disclosure, this show is taped because right now you are prepared. This this is not a fake background, Tam Fam, behind her. She's in the Bahamas because you are getting married tomorrow. Yes, yes. so this is the beautiful estate in the Bahamas that uh, I'm getting married in. All of the decorators are all waiting patiently for our interview uh, to be wonderful. And (laughs) I I waited patiently for my invite, didn't get it, but (laughs) we're still celebrating with you. So listen, this show is about family and how family inspires us. This form of family being matrimony and a wedding, this is your first marriage at age 55. Yeah, it is, it is. I had um, a lot of work to do. You know, people talk about the biological clock and age and everyone's clock isn't set the same way. Um, I, I was working on Lisa. I wanted to bring the best version of myself. I wanted to I wanted to heal parts of me that I didn't want to bring into a marriage. And quite frankly, I was I was busy being a single mom and learning how to be a good one and a CEO. And so it just wasn't something that I had to do early. I didn't I didn't subscribe to by 30 I need to be married. Yeah. By 35 by, I I didn't want to subscribe to that. Don't put your clock in my body. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you raised your son Jelani as a single parent. I was raised by my mom, who was a single parent for many years. And my mom used to always say, I would go without so that you could have. I went with holes in my clothes so that you could go to the schools that would prop you up to be who I am today. And so when you talk about family, that child 
inspired the woman that you are yeah. today. You would not have been you without him. Yeah, which is why uh, he's the, the man walking me down the aisle. Oh. I walked him down the aisle. Tomorrow he will walk me down the aisle and, um, and celebrate and give me away to my husband. So uh, I was honored to prioritize parenting. It wasn't easy, um, but that's, you know, that's a part of the journey. And my son watched me, I always say the best example I gave my son wasn't to avoid being knocked down because I was knocked down and he saw it. The best example I can give my son is how he saw me get back up over and over and yeah. over and over. Isn't that the beauty of family? They inspire us. We inspire them. You know, you give this give and take. And, and I read a lot about, you know, your message and what you bring. And as I said, I think a lot about my mom who was 19 when she got pregnant with me. She's now 71. And I, I, I say to her, I knew you win. And she's like, I knew you win too. You know, and it was <laughs> this journey. Yeah. In 1997, yeah. you started your business, Motivating the Masses. And you wanted to share these tools with people for success. But what I love that you call the advice that you give, you call it plain old everyday people skills. And I think yeah. that's sometimes lost. People feel like if it's not from an Ivy League or a professor or for someone, in your case, you're a multimillionaire. But in reality, it's the salt of the earth, common sense advice that we don't always listen yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I I look at who I am today and I go, that don't get caught up in that because I was the girl who got a fail in English and got a D minus in speech. Yeah. I was the woman on government assistance and I was the woman that found out at 25 she's functionally dyslexic. Mm. So where I am now, that's that's just the current sense. I, what I've journeyed through was more of my journey, is more of my life, you know, and I didn't never I never got stuck there. I believe that that we take up real estate in a moment. Yeah. It's supposed to be a moment, but we make it a lifetime. The difference between my journey and most is that I allowed a difficult moment or a learning moment or a highlight moment to be a moment. And I was always looking for what's my next moment as well. And so um, I think there's just great messaging and the opportunity to recreate, restart, press reset, redesign, recommit, yeah. re-choose, re-energize, re rejuvenate. That's what the Bahamas was for me. A place where I can just re-choose Lisa, re-choose love, re-choose trusting me and love in the uh, same sentence. Well, coming up, the man that Lisa chose and chose her, Marcellus Hall, is going to join us to talk about their family bond, their wedding tomorrow, and what family now means to him in this form. I just want y'all to hear this story really quick and then we're done. My boyfriend just proposed to me. I guess. <laughs> and I am so excited because I waited for him. I dated other people, but I wouldn't go all the way. I, I, I knew my soul felt that I would know. And I know with everything in my fiber, everything in my being, that I waited for a very good reason, that I have the partner for me that's worthy of me. Hey, you. What's up, guys? My name nervous. is Brett Nobles. <laughs> and I'm Ashley Nobles. And we're the founders Look, of YourIncomeSpace.com. Let me pause it real quick, because I want to get y'all a little feedback, because that's a lot to swallow right there. Um, anybody have any comments on the, on what we just saw? Cause we're going to meet him, the guy that, um, she waited for. And we were talking earlier about, you know, writing notes to our mates and starting journals, like, you know, writing notes to him. She went through something like that, where, um, she knew what she wanted. You know, she was dating. Like she said, she was dating before. It wasn't that she wasn't dating, but she knew what she wanted and she wanted to, to re-choose herself first. She wanted to take care of herself first and, and make sure that she was bringing her full authentic self to the table before dating, before, you know, choosing her husband. And that's where a lot of us are right now is, you know, we're dating right now, but we're not fixed yet. We're not, we, we haven't healed yet. We, there's, we still got some work to do with ourselves and you can't bring another person into your relationship, you know, if. You still got some questions about yourself. Am I good enough? Am I well enough? Am I smart enough? Am I pretty enough? Am I, you know, whatever it is, whatever your if is, 
are you ready to choose yourself? Are you ready to take care of yourself first? And I think when we talk about being loved properly, it starts with yourself first. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's where she is right now. So she chose herself. It took her up. She's 55 years old being married for the first time. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm like her, you know, I've not been married. I've, I've always, I've always either been the bridesmaid. I've been engaged for uh, seven years. I was, you know, in a very um, marriage like relationship, you could say, but I've never been married. And so for me, I get it, you know, because I, I feel like I have a lot of work to do. And so I don't want to bring, get into another relationship that doesn't fit God's will for me, God's best for me. And so I'm still working on me. And like she said in the video, I'm re-choosing Shelly. I'm not, I'm not, you know, choosing anybody else. So anybody have any thoughts on what was said so far? Because what we're about to lead into is the end of what she went through. Anybody have any thoughts? And does anybody know who Lisa Nichols is? Have y'all ever met her before or ever, you know? Yes, I love Lisa Nichols. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got, <laughs> yeah, I got her books and... I've seen her speak and she's just all that. Went through <laughs> her weight loss period. Yeah. No. I saw it all. So she's she's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She is. Amazing. Yeah, she is. She she's I mean, like I said, I've I've had her on my my list of go-to people when I'm feeling down and when I when I feel like everything I'm doing is is not worth it's not going nowhere. Like I I'm, I feel like I'm on a a, tra a wheel sometimes going in a circle. And you know, she says it all the time. This is a moment. You're in a moment. Yeah. You that's made right. these moments laugh. When she right. said that, it's like it opened up another door because I'm sitting here worried about this thing, but I'm not looking at what's gonna happen next and what's ahead of me. This is a right. moment that I'm here. I'm 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 here. I got health issues. I'm here. I don't have a, a relationship. I'm here. It's a moment. Right. It's a moment. A lot of us, when we're single for too long, we're getting stuck in this moment. It's time to come out of that moment. What do you need to come out of that moment? That's what you need to be figuring out. What, what can help you come out of this moment? Are you choosing yourself? Are you done choosing yourself? Are you ready? Are you healed? Are you fixed? You know, so that, that's where we are. Anyone have any thoughts before we move on to meeting um, her mate? I just want to say we might be fixed or we, we might be close to being fixed, but then we have to be able to trust, trust to, to go out and meet because nobody's gonna come to, I mean, I'm not saying Prince Charming won't ring your doorbell, but the, you know, but the percentage of that happening is gonna be probably less than greater. So you gotta be ready to, you know, to be able to get outside of your comfort zone and maybe go some places that you normally wouldn't go Right. You know, for for that encounter to happen. Right. You have to present yourself. You have to you, mm -hmm. you have to go out. There's no there's no like you said, he's not going to come knocking on the door. I mean, he could be the mailman. I don't know. But yeah, you know. <laughs> or the milkman. Yeah. Or the yeah. Milkman. yeah. You know, anything can happen. But the first thing is you've got to you got to you got to love yourself. Self-love. You got to love yourself because you don't want somebody else pouring into you their mess and their stuff and telling you what you are and who you are and be strong in your faith. The minute that you trust God, when you, that, 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 that's your first love that, you know, he's showing you what love is unconditional love, agape love. That right. is the love that, that, that you should be yearning for. And yeah. once you know that God's got you, like he got you, girl, he got you. <laughs> yeah. He got you, Joe. Then you can step out into any arena, any right. event, any right. place that you walk into because you are secure in his love and then you're securing yourself. So you got to get aligned. Those two things have to be aligned. Like right now, I know I'm here. I'm not all right. the way here because I know there's some stuff I'm still working on. Yes. So I'm not going to go out right now and try to, you know, get into a relationship when I know I'm not, I'm not there yet. Yes. You know? Yeah. But once you're fixed, once you feel like you know, you are completely, you love everything about yourself, you know, enough to where you can inter introduce love, go for it. Step out on faith. That's what he wants you to do. That's what his love, his love will cover you. His love will protect you. And as long as you are on your knees praying to God, he got you. That's He's right. going to lead you into that relationship, into that right person. 
He's not going to steer you wrong. You've been, you've been in these classes for too long. You've been praying for too long. Why well, he's not going to leave you now. So, um, but I just, I don't want to go that, that would go there yet. Um, but let me introduce, so her husband, um, this story, man, I tell you, when, when God is in a thing, he makes it so beautiful that you forget about all those bad things, all those mm -hmm. bad relationships, all those people that hurt you. You forget about it all because you know that it was all for this moment right here. So I'm going to play this moment right here. Welcome back, fam. And we've been talking to motivational speaker and best-selling author, Lisa Nichols. She filmed that video in 2020, just minutes after she'd accepted a marriage proposal from her boyfriend, sports two years anchor ago, Marcella she Cole, who works for so our TV in the Bahamas. She posted it on Instagram with the caption, mm -hmm. don't settle, it's worth the wait. Wait no more, let's bring in Marcella to the conversation. Big day. <laughs> Congratulations, Marcellus. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Um, no, no, I wasn't until you asked me if I was nervous. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> but no, I'm good. <laughs> okay, I won't ask that. Don't be nervous. I do ask you because we're talking about family today. You know, mother, child with Lisa and Jelani, Gabrielle Union and her family. But the bond of family when you choose it through marriage or choose it through commitment. What does that mean for you? How does this version of family inspired you? For me, I mean, this was like one of those things that, you know, we, when you finally come across like that, that one thing that was missing, like it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You put it all together and there's one little thing missing. You can't figure it out. And then you finally find that one piece and you click it in and it's done. And, oh. and uh, that's exactly how it feels right now. It's so beautiful. Now, you met on a trip in Jamaica. Keynote speaker, Marcellus was there as a reporter. This is the part I love. You went your separate ways. Marcellus lived in the Bahamas. You went home, Lisa, to California. He started texting you eight years. Marcellus, you text her every month for yeah, yeah. eight years. Yeah, I'm a glutton for punishment. You know, it's one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> what was happening in those text messages, Lisa, that it took eight years? I, I'm not right. <laughs> he, all he would say, literally, all he would say is, hi. And I would say, Hi. <laughs> I just, I, 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 well, you know what? I have to say, and 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 maybe someone in the audience can relate to me. When I I was over two hundred and ten pounds when I met him, and when we met, and I was still on my journey to go. God, how can I get to the best version of me? So I innate, I projected a story onto him. I thought he's tall, dark, handsome. He was fit like this, he, and I said he's he. Listen, he got a wife, a girlfriend, and nine kids. He is not really single. And I just made the story up. I, and then I said, he's only claiming two of those kids. Lisa. But the, the reality was, I needed to get to a place where I knew I felt worthy of someone choosing me hard yeah. and choosing me clear. And he kept saying hi for eight years, and finally I figured it out. My, myself, she had your whole life story, which was none of it was true, but you hung in right, there. Right. I tell them all the time, baby, we are together because of your consistency. Aww. And here's what happened. I, what happened that made me notice him was I was in the shower and I was crying out to God, God, just bring me a man who's consistent. Yeah. Just consistent. Be his word. I get out the shower and my phone pings. Hi. <laughs> my phone ping hi 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 i'm gonna just sit right there for a second how many of y'all have been praying to god asking him for someone and asking him for you know a sign god give me a sign <laughs> i just need a sign lord just show me the man that i'm supposed to marry and there's a guy now, right now in your presence that, you know, he's, he might not be tall, dark, and handsome, or he might not be cute or Joe, you know, same thing for, for you. <laughs> um, but he's been texting. He's been consistent. He's been around. He's been saying, hi, uh -huh. <laughs> hi. You know, it, it's just, I love that story because I know for me, I've had that moment where 
Um, I know there's, 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 there's someone that does that to me all the time. He says, hi, every morning, um, you know, once a week or whatever, you know, holidays, everything. And, you know, I just keep saying, he's too cute for me. He ain't going to, I don't even know why he keeps saying hi to me. (laughs) That's why this story resonated so much with me. Cause it's like, he, he looks too good to be wanting me. Why would he want me? You know, I'm trying to stop sharing here. How do I stop? And so anyway, so if anyone wants to talk about that video, anything that resonated with you guys with the story, um, raise your hand, put it in the chat. I'd love to hear what you think about this, this love story right here and how this represents being loved properly. And this woman is like the rest of us. She started off single, started off her journey, trying to you know, be the better mom and be, you know, great CEO. And, and she's going through all these different levels and fixing herself. She went from 200, over 200 plus pounds. And then now she's, you know, she worked on herself. She did the work. She Mm -hmm. put the work in. And now here she is now with the, with the, with the trophy at the end, the tall, dark and handsome. This is what we are aiming for. This is what being loved look like. She did the work but it starts with us. That's why we are here. It doesn't start with, let's just jump out into a relationship, do the work first, do your inner works first, like Marilyn would say, right? Miss Katambra, I see your hand. Yes, sweetheart. Oh, I'm just over here like, nah, that's too loud. No, no, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, was it loud? No, I'm like, no, 55, like I just, I mean, it's a oh. beautiful love story. <laughs> it's a beautiful love story and, and to see, that, you know, they both look beautiful. She's healthy, he's healthy, she's handsome, he's handsome. I mean, she's beautiful, he's handsome. And then you look 55, oh Lord. I wonder <laughs> how, I truly, I truly wonder how long she was in the wilderness mm. and didn't have to be before yeah. she came to the realization that, okay, it's really me. I need to really, really work on me. and. Did it take, once, one, as a single parent, it really does take that long to raise your children and raise them um, in a manner that is healthy when you're a yeah. single parent. Yeah. And then there's the other option that also you have to, you have to take that time because one, you can't focus on healing wholly within yourself because you have to focus on not traumatizing your children with your trauma. That's right. right. While you're raising them. And then once they're grown, then you have to focus on all of that that you put on the back burner to make sure you raise them untraumatized. So now you have to go back and with the shovel and dig all that stuff up. And then once you drudge all that stuff up, now you, you got to sit it in front of you and sit with it and That's realize right. where it came from. What did you pick up and who put what on you and then assign it to its proper place. And then mm-hmm. to be to a point once you do all that, you're happy single and you like your peace. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna take some years to do. I even want to bother with anybody <laughs> now that I've gotten to this point to even tro- try to put myself out there again. So it takes that stage to get to vulnerability to even let someone in and then somebody just texting you hi. You're like, boy, go on with that hi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> with that, you, you in another state talking about hi, in another country talking about hi, hi, what, what? what is how the temperature here and you in Bahamas where it's cool, you know? So then you have that. And then <laughs> and, and just the, the fact that you're on another continent and I'm on this continent, how is that going to work? So I'm, I'm looking at the longevity of it all, but to truly be healed and hold to a place, like she said, where you felt worthy of somebody truly pursuing you like that, mm-hmm. truly like you, where you have look in your mirror, like, oh yeah, he better work for me. You know, that, takes courage it takes truly being honest with who you are but lord i'm like lord don't let it take to 55 but, <laughs> but look here lord if if it be your will and it take to 55 lord it take to 55 because guess what you're going to grant me the health to continue to I enjoy was- that love for years and years mm-hmm. and years to come but that that's my take on it yeah i i, yeah. I agree i agree so much because she said it took her eight years to even notice him. Eight years. So you were talking about that wilderness part. That might have been it. You know, she, it took her a while to lose the weight. Cause if, um, I think 
yeah, it took her eight years because eight years ago is when I was introduced to her. She was my, like, she was over, you know, she was a plus size woman. And so when I started seeing her losing weight, I almost didn't recognize who she was. When the name came, I was like, that's not her. <laughs> because she was doing that work. And she was probably getting comfortable in her piece and her skin and getting used to yeah. that new body and getting used to the fact that, honey, you're not big no more. You are, you are skinny, you know? So yeah, she had to go through a whole, a whole change in her mindset of who she is physically, mentally, and how strong she is. And then her platform was growing so much. Her business was growing so much. Now you have to, you know, trust whoever's coming in the door is not going after you for your money. So she had, yeah, so she's had to go through so many different moments, different parts in her life that had to make sense. So yeah, it might've took her to 55. That might not be our story. I pray to God, that ain't my story. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it, you know, it's all, all those, all these steps, all these moments led up to that. So now she is physically fit and, and able to handle this marriage. You see what I'm saying? Would the 200 plus, you know, Lisa be able to handle this kind of marriage? Probably not. So her journey, everything that led her up to this point is for this point. It, it, it was, it was there for a reason. So, you know, the last time I, I came, we talked about the Bishop Noel thing and how that took 20 something years. I'm just trying to let you guys know, Hey, this thing might take some time, but like a timber was saying, how long are you going to be in this wilderness? You know, it's up to us to make the choice to, to learn, learn what we need to learn and move on, not yeah. sit there, not get comfortable, you know, get what you need to get. Like she was, Lisa was also saying, it's a moment. Some of us stay in that moment. We just stay there. And I feel like I'm almost into that point where, like I was saying earlier, I love my peace. I love being single. Mm-hmm. I love learning what I'm learning and, and seeing different ask, different points of views from everybody. I just don't want anyone coming in here, disturbing my peace disturbing what I've worked so hard to build on my own or with, with the help of God, of course. Sure. And, and, and that's where I'm at is that I just don't want anyone to disturb my peace, but I'm still working on me in the process. Could I work on me a little bit faster? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm still, I'm just enjoying every moment of it because where I came from, I, I didn't enjoy me. And so now I'm enjoying me. I'm enjoying what I like. I like, I know, I know the foods I like to eat. I know the clothes I like to wear. I know the the hair I like to wear. Okay. (laughs) You know, so I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying me. So if that, that's, you know, where I'm at, but like Tamara was saying, and like Ms. Nichols was saying, sometimes you don't want to stay there too long because then you just, you forget that it's not about you. There's someone else out there that needs you, you know, Mr. Joe, I haven't heard from you all day. (laughs) <laughs> what, what is your thoughts on this video well, this is yeah well I, you know i think the, the the thing of the matter is i think it's she worked not only on the physical part of her but she also have worked on the spiritual part of her mm-hmm. to grow that because you think about it, you got a son he's a grown man now but even in any situation you go into yeah. If she was dating back then, he has to be a part of that. So when you bring another person into your life, you just don't bring it into your life. You bring it into everything that comes with you and you don't dismiss your son and all of this. But the thing that I hear here too is this, we have to operate in nowness. Any other place, is a definition of insanity. The truth, the nowness. What does that mean? That means right now that the human me has the history, but the eternal me, present moment, being present, don't have history. That's why you have to move forward. Mm-hmm. The eternal you, we have to operate now. Because the God we serve, and I always say it, is in love with the future. And love yourself when you're by yourself. Love thyself. You said it best earlier. I, you you got to have, know what that feels like. It starts with you. When, and when, when we look at all of this, what's happening with you? 
where are you at this moment? The seasons have changed. There's newness in the air. Is that newness in your air? Are you still? Are you still from that? Are you bringing stuff in the past? The weight of a boat is behind it. So have you left that behind? And if you still behind in, the, in that weight, you haven't come into the present moment. It's yeah. about present moment. The best gift you can give yourself is time to be fully present. Are we fully present in the present? Yep. That's where you gotta be. And I think it's newness and keep that going, you know? And, and I always say, you know, that we all age, that's true. But the one thing that don't ever age is thought. Thought don't have age. So I can keep thinking and get better. And a positive, anything is better than negative nothing. Positivity, let's move forward from here from here, from here, from now. And I hope I'm making some kind of sense because I, I'm, I'm, move, I'm about moving forward. I, I just can't, you know, get stuck and stuck in victim consciousness and all of that. Oh, that's, no, no. And I'm, ha I'm happy for her because yeah. you can look at that energy with them. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I think it's the fact that he know where he's at she knows where she's at yeah. and they both have grown tremendously. And that's the whole thing to keep that together. I think growth is essential. Uh, that's just my thought on that. Beautiful. I love what he said that, you know, it was like a missing puzzle piece that was mm -hmm. missing in his, in his world. And sometimes I feel that way about myself. Like I know something's missing, you know, and, and until I figure out how, or where, and when, that, that piece is going to fit in, um, you know, I still got to work on myself. Mm -hmm. um, two years ago, I decided to, to start over and, 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 I, and keep starting over. And what I say by starting over, every aspect of my life, I decided to, to stop. When COVID hit, hit, and this probably goes for a lot of us, it, it really opened my eyes to say, you know what, life is way too short. We are, we are in the last days in the Bible. I need to start making some decisions that's going to be best for Shelly, and not best for the world, right? Best for me, and not not just you know for my family. Um, best to please God and to move His His move His kingdom forward, to be a to to so that you know I'm I'm uh, um in His in His uh oh my God I can't talk that I'm serving for yeah. Him I'm leading others to Him that I'm not just doing this for myself. It's a, it, but but I'm also doing it and I'm doing it with happily, purpose. With purpose. purpose, you know. So I made a conscious decision, and when I joined this this platform, it opened up something for me that that I was missing. It was like a puzzle piece, like the man was saying. This was a puzzle. Um, I never had really good relationships with women, and the first year that I joined Marilyn, it was nothing. You know, she has a lot of women followers, right? And so I just, I never, I was just like, oh no, there's too many women in this, you know, in this organization, but I stayed because I never saw such camaraderie. These women that I've been introduced from dream builders, from this, you know, singles platform, they really care. They really open up. And I, and I, and I said, okay, God, I'm going to change the way I think when it comes to my relationship with women. So I started trusting and email some of you guys. I have your personal numbers and start, you know, building relationship. I'm not used to stuff like that. So right. that was the first thing. This is two years ago now. I've, I've made the start to start that over. So my 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 loving women um, relationship with women have changed. I'm now starting to trust women again with personal business and and opening up my heart because you know we can be very, you know, gossipy and and, and whatnot. So I'm getting to that part of my life where I'm able to do that. Um, the next thing I did was my job. My job was very toxic. My job was making me sick, actually. Um, mentally sick, physically sick. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, was, I was abusing, um, you know, go, going out to drink and partying because I was so stressed out. Not, not like every day. Not, it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. but it was just more like I, I did it if I wanted to and that was that. And I knew I needed to leave this place. So here it is again, you know, 
I had to, to make those decisions to start over again there. Um, I was involved in a church for seven years. I was a, a worship singer. Um, I did events for this church. Um, I was, you know, just what was an active member in the church. And, but this church took me for granted. This church took everything out of me instead of, instead of the more I poured out, the more they took, the more I poured out, the more they took. So I, I said, okay, I'm going to change churches. I'm going to, you know, try something different. When COVID came, everything was online. So I was able to like log into like different organizations, different churches, and then find a church that fit, fit me again. So two years ago, I'm on this journey now, just like Lisa was saying, she started off her journey, every moment, everything that she went through. And so I met Miss Marilyn's group two years ago as well. So two years ago, I'm on this journey and I'm telling you, and I don't know who all has been on here for the last two years with me, but I, there's a, it's such a sweet thing to see where God can take you if you just trust, if That's you right. just hold on. And I'm being loved by him properly right now. The last two years, he has kept me. I have not, I've, I've, I think I went through two different jobs since I left my other job, trying to find a place where I can serve, where I can, you know, be able to work and serve and be in ministry and, and still be able to, to, you know, to have me, have me some me time. And I found that thing, keep working at it, keep putting everything, put yourself first, give yourself everything you want, put it forward. If you want a new job, go for it. If you want a new house, go, whatever it is, put your, put, put, put your faith on it. Ask God for it, pray for it you know, start your journey, start journaling, start writing things down, post-it notes. I mean, I got stuff everywhere just to remind me, if you see on my wall, it reminds right. me everywhere I go that you started this journey two years ago. There's more to this story. There's That's more right. to this story, but it starts with you. So when we talk about being loved properly, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's the secret to it all is loving yourself. What have you done for yourself that, that, you know, that makes you feel good. Yes. Where are you now with loving yourself? So I always, that's, that's where I, I talk about it all the time. Self-love, self-love. It is so important. It's so important. I never, I never knew such a thing when I started my journey. Before I started my journey, I was so busy trying to please everybody. Mm -hmm. My job loved me because they knew I was I, they can count on me. My church, they can count on me. My kids, they can count on me. My family, they can count on me. My friends, they can count on me. Who was there for me? That's right. It's exhausting. Like I was telling Marilyn today, it is exhausting putting out all this masculine energy because that's what it is. I'm just pushing out all this because there's no one here to do, to take the trash out or, or do this or do that. So, you know, after a while, you gotta, you gotta let them things go. And, and I chose myself. So what are you doing to choose for yourself? Have you even thought about what it looks like to even choose yourself? That's true. You know, so anybody, anybody have any comments or thoughts? I don't want to keep, you know, dredging up. I just wanted to give you all the backstory of where, you know, where I'm at right now with being loved properly. I'm, I'm loving myself. I'm loving myself properly. What are your, where's your walk at right now, guys? Where do, what are you up to as far as being loved properly? Anybody? Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, Shelly. Um, I would say um, I'm at the, you know, I'm at the point too, as well, um, far as, you know, loving myself. And I really enjoyed that video that you showed um, to Shelly. And it made me um, think about um, my situation um, recently. And I, I know, I think a couple of months, uh, months ago, I'm not sure quite how far that was. But uh, I, I mentioned on the call that I had uh, met a gentleman that was in his um, early 50s and he would call, he would text me every single day, good morning, good morning. And he was very consistent and he did make it clear, you know, that, you know, um, communication was his, uh, was a big deal to him. And um, he was, you know, again, nice looking, fit and, um, and everything or whatnot, but um, I wasn't as consistent as he was because I was so busy doing um, other things um, with my career and, and with, my, with my son. And he, 
he he was very aware of that, but I don't think he had the patience to wait as long as that young that that other guy did for that woman for eight years. And uh, for his birthday, you know, we actually, you know, went out, you know, I went out with him for his birthday. But when my birthday came, um, he did, you know, um, reach out a lot of times before that. And he did wish me happy birthday. But after that, because, you know, his daughter's birthday was the same as mine. But after that, he uh, uh, I think he said happy birthday because he did want to take me out. He wanted to do a lot, but I was just always busy and, you know, and um and everything. And the next day he, um, he sent that text message and he, and it was somewhere along the lines. It said, I wish you good luck on your, your career. And it was something else. And I said, let me reach out to my mama. Cause she a little bit older. Let me ask her what this, with this. And I said, mama, do that mean he trying to say that he done talking to me? And she said, girl, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it means. And she said, mama, and she said, she, this is what you tell him. I said, no, mama, never mind. I, I can handle it. I got <laughs> it. And so um, I responded back and um, his name was Reginald. I said, Reginald, I said, I want to thank you for um, for these for showing me what a real man truly you know, is for the last couple of weeks. And I said, I wish you well in your life as well. And, um, you know, and, and I just pretty much kind of left it positive because, you know, I did pray for, you know, a good man, but at, and I guess, you know, we, we pray that we want somebody good, but are we ready? Are we going to be ready when that man comes? The question is, are you going to be ready when, you know, God send you that guy? Are you ready when he sends it? And I wasn't ready. You know, I felt like if I was consistent and, and responding, um, maybe things could have worked, but, you know, again, um, it takes two and, um, you know, he wasn't like the, the guy on the uh, clip that you showed that kept texting high and high for eight years. Some people don't have time to text that, that long and be that patient for eight years. It just depends on the individual. But um, I think he was, you know, really looking for someone and, um, and, you know, and I just wasn't ready. And I just felt like I needed to focus on myself. And normally, you know, um, I would be more engaged. I would be upset, but I wasn't. I mean, I really wasn't. I have so much going on and I just felt like I need to focus on myself and um, I know when I'm ready and, yes, uh, and and when I'm ready, I'm going to be available and I will know because I'll be able to give, you know, him the type of, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, I'll be able to give him the type of attention he needed. And I did tell Reginald and his name was Reginald. I said, Reginald, I said, listen, I said, I believe you're a great guy. But I also uh, know that I can give you the attention that you need right now. And I said, I feel like you should continue seeing other people. And I said, don't let me stop you from seeing other people and don't wait on me. I said, because right now I just moved down here and I'm still trying to find me and I'm still working on me and my son. I said, you know, uh, because he kept sending me text messages. It made me feel like he was rushing me, but he wasn't. He was just being himself and he was just into me and I was into him, but not as as he was for me and I didn't have that time. I didn't have that, 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 I guess more time. I didn't have as much as time on my hand than he, you know, than he did, but you know, he did respect me. He did say a lot that I was very mature for my age, but like I said, I tell any man, don't wait on me. You know, if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm not being consistent, you know, I'm gonna keep it real and I'm gonna keep it 100. Don't wait on me. I'm not going to sugarcoat none. This is what I'm doing. I don't have to lie about nothing. I'm not here. I hear messing around. I just, you know, I'm all about, you know, focusing on, you know, my future and my child. And, and again, um, you just, you just know when it's, when it's your turn to be in a relationship. And, you know, right now it's not, it's not my time. You know, I'm 35 and, you know, when God send that right one, I know because I'll be at the, I'll be more of a, at a standstill when I'm ready and, and I'm not moving around as much because, you know, the same thing you put in the same energy, you know, you put into your job or, or with God, you have to be prepared to put it in with the, with the partner as well. And you have to be prepared to change your whole life around for that partner. That's and, right. um, you know, and it's just a lot of work that goes into that, that I feel like I still need to learn and, and sit along a lot, uh, you know, with other Christian women. And that's why being on this call is very important to me because it teaches me things. You know, we think we might be ready. But the question is, are you ready? That's a good topic right there, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> you already got my sermon. 
<laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> but but anyways, I just wanted to I just wanted to the 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 share that I thought I was ready, um, but I wasn't. You know, right. sometimes mm-hmm. we think we're ready, but we but when it when 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 God brings it to us, you know, we 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 we're not, we're not ready, and yeah. we can't see you making excuses. They always say, "Be careful what you pray for," yeah. you know. Be careful what you pray for, and and um, you know, and um, I can definitely um vouch on that. I'm just gonna um, be patient and mm-hmm. uh, be true to myself and be true to God, and just wait That's right. and pray to Him, and and um, be ready when He do send it to me again. Because God, you know, He can't. I don't. I don't want to keep praying about the same thing, and then He bring it to me, and then I'm I'm not ready. So I just want to be true to myself and true to, to true to you know God as well about you know, what I'm praying for and be very mindful about what I pray when I talk to him. So that's, that's all right. I mean. You, you chose your, you re-chose, like, she, like Lisa was saying, you re-choose Sheena. You're choosing Sheena. That's all it is. You're right. just choosing yourself. You, you don't, you won't love, but the minute that, you know, you realize that that's, that's really not what you need right now. Cause you got so much to the, the guy's demanding or wanting to spend time with you, but you know you don't have that time right now because you've got mm-hmm. so much else going on with you. So right now you realize this this isn't right the right moment for you yeah. because right now you're choosing Sheena. You're choosing when Sheena's ready, and you're following. You're going by what what God is giving telling you to do, not by what your flesh is telling you to do, because our flesh is going to jump into whatever relationship just because you know. He want me and I might as well go for it. That, that, that kind of thing. And that's how, you know, I'm not speaking for anybody else, but for myself, like that's how it would be. You know, I would just jump into the relationship because someone wants me. He wants me. So why would I not go for it? No matter if there's 10 red flags popping up, why not? But this time around, I'm choosing me. Yes. I'm choosing me. I pray to God it's not when I'm 55, but if it looks like her at 55, smiling, that glow, his glow, <laughs> I'm okay with waiting. I, I don't want to rush this thing. I want to, I want to take my time. I want that picture that Cheryl had on her on her post when she when I saw it. I want that hug from behind, that comfort, that strength from a man that lets you know I got you. But I want him to be given to me by God. That's right. I don't want to, I don't want to be the one to rush that because I'm telling you when you are loved properly from a spouse, from a mate, it is the best feeling in the world. I, you know, if you haven't had that, please, I'm telling you that, that, that right there is the ultimate, ultimate great feeling in the world. I, I wanted to jump into the scripture that I, um, that I chose for tonight because I chose it. And you know, when God leads you to a scripture, you're like, why that? That don't even make no sense because I don't, I don't, I don't like that. But he led me to Proverbs five for some reason. And I read it. I kept reading it. I kept writing all these notes. I'm like, this doesn't, this don't go well, but I'm going to read it to you guys. because I want y'all to just, and I'm reading the NLT version, um, Proverbs five, and I'm going to start, um, it's basically about avoiding immoral women, but it's, it's, it's for the men and for us to, to know what they need, what, what, let me, let me read it to you. I'm trying to find which, um, verse 18, let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving deer, a graceful doe. Let her breasts satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Why be captivated by, why be captivated by so, my son, by an immoral, immoral woman or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? For the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes. An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. Um, I'm going to stop right there. So the part that got me was the description of a wife in this, mm-hmm. in this, in this thing. And 
I love where he says, rejoicing your wife of your youth. Hello. Um, she is a loving deer and a graceful doe. And may you always be captivated by her love. That's the woman I, I want to be. I want to be able to captivate my husband, captivate his love. So when I, when, when, when I think about that picture, and I wish I had that picture, Cheryl, dang, I meant to ask you to, because to, I wanted you guys to see it, where this big, strong man is like wrapped around, you know, the woman and is just protecting her. And that's, that's, that's the love that I'm looking for. Um, that's the love I think we're all looking for, right? Um, but I want to be a graceful doe and I want to captivate his love. So how do we do that? Again, you got to work on yourself. You have to work on yourself. You're not just going to, you know, be, you're not going to wake up and be a graceful doe. You're not going to be, wake, you know, wake, wake up and be um, captivating to your husband, but you have to work on that. And you have to work on that. You have to stay praying. You got to stay praying, staying on your knees, praying, asking God, serving, doing everything you can, yes. because this is the, this is where you are. You're single and you have to, you have to enjoy that moment, but you also have to work, put the work in. So, um, anyone have any thoughts on the scripture that I read? I know it's, it's one of those scriptures that a lot of pastors, when they pray about it, it's, it's, they're talking about sex and it goes into like, you know, <laughs> it, it, it can go into a whole different, different thing. But I just love that little snippet right there when they were talking about the wife and what the wife, the model of the wife is and her role in making sure he doesn't go to that immoral woman, that he right. is captivated by her. I want to be that. I don't want my husband to stray. I don't want my husband to step out of line. I want that 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 love that he properly loves me, no matter what's going on, no matter what's in the streets, no, no matter who got the BBLs and the DDLs and, and the BBDs. <laughs> that my love is going to captivate him. So any, any thoughts, anybody have any thoughts or comments? Let me see. Mr. Joe. <laughs> of course. That scripture, um, I'm telling you, that scripture is fierce. I, I, I'm sweating over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think when that spiritual man sees a drawn, or however that is, energy, Light calls them to light. And when that man, whoever that man is, and I'm talking species um, or that woman, mm -hmm. um, is drawn to that. That's, that's common components. That is something, I think when you see in yourself what you see in the, another person, that's common components. And, and that, in itself, the growing, the maturing, the purposeful man and the purposeful woman spot that in another, in the opposite. And it's not something that is fake, it's real. You know, when we talk about purpose, it's always a tie to giving, loving, giving, and serving. Serving, service for many leads to greatness. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, when, when the spiritual man recognize that she's not just a, for, uh, to have an intimate or sexual relationship, it's so much bigger than that. Exactly. And it should be. I mean, you can, that's easy. That's easy. That's, that's, that is not complicated at all. Mm -hmm. It's readily available, yada, yada, yada. But it's something much bigger. It's so much bigger than that. Because you have to be in tune on so much uh, a bigger level. So mm -hmm. we recognize the vibration when we are on the same vibration. Otherwise, we're not. Mm -hmm. Are you there, Shirley? I'm here. I'm here. Oh, OK. But yeah, that's, that's, people, sorry. yeah, it's just re recognizing that. And, 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 and once you recognize that and, and know that's a helpmate in all that's areas, right. not just one particular area, then you have a better understanding on exactly what you read. But it, you have to see it 
not as a not as a carnal man. You have to see it as a spiritual conscious man, mm -hmm. because your eyes of understanding are so much bigger and bigger. Because, yeah. like I say, you, you you had a whole different level, and you you not you you not having low fruit. You have high fruit, high dimension, and that's where you want to be because that's that's the a uh, spiritual man overcoming the low energies and, and you, you want that you want that I that's just that. all right so i just i don't want to you know keep y'all longer than than that so i appreciate everybody anybody have any thoughts again on on the topic of being loved properly any any where's everybody at right now when it comes to that are you still working on yourself are you you know are you guys out here uh, dating? What's 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 going on with everyone? Anyone want to share where they are as far as being loved properly? Before we sign off, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, listen. Like I said, the the main the main thing tonight that I wanted to leave you guys with is just take care of yourself. Just take care of yourself. It, you know, as we see in our brother Will and Will and Jada, love is it, it could be so different, so many different um views um and, and what we think you know being loved properly looks like. And then we've got Lisa Nichols right here, who this is, you know, this is our Christian sister. She's walked the walk, she's she's did the work, and, and here she is now with the end result. So we see it in both ways. Um, love can, love is, is, it can be, you know, in different ways. We all want a different kind of love, but at the end of the day, the number one thing that they all have in common is that they put the work in, they That's took right. care of themselves. They took care of themselves first, whatever that looks like. If it's mental health, I, you know, the field that I'm in, I work for a mental health, uh, company. And I'm telling you right now, I have seen so many people walk in, the, walk in one way and they leave another because this is, a, is, is, is such a strong yes, tool. That's right. Um, and when this gets misconstrued and when this gets messed up, um, you, your life can change for the worst and for the good. So take care of yourself. You know, if you feel like you have a problem, it's okay. It's no shame in that. Get help. Whatever yes. it takes to get yourself together, mentally, physically, whatever it is, put your best self forward because this body is not yours. It doesn't belong to you. That's it's right. not yours. So we need to do as best as we can. I'm preaching to myself what I'm preaching to y'all. Um, <laughs> and I, like I said, I started my journey two years ago and I'm still working on me, still working on that journey. And I'm, I'm enjoying every step of the way. There's some bad things, you know, I've gotten some bad health uh, news uh, this week, um, but I'm still going to put it through. I'm still going to keep right. going. That's right. I'm still going to go um, because I know the doctors might say one thing, but he going to say another thing. And so I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that, but just y'all, y'all take care of yourself, take care of your mind, your body, your soul, and just keep him first. He will lead you to the love. You'll be able to get <laughs> properly, you know, right yeah. now he is loving you properly for us who are right. truly single, who aren't dating. He covers us every day. He hugs us every night, you know, just make sure you just stay, stay, keep your eyes on him at all time and serve. Serving your yeah. community, that's a big help. You know, serving your local church, whatever you need to do, you got to give something back. Yes. You got to give something back. He gives us so much in this crazy, crazy world. It's a shame that we don't give it back. So that's, right. that's, my, that's my tip for the day. Take care of yourself, serve, and, and, you know, focus on God. Anybody else, any one of my crew members have any lasting words they want to say? Miss Faith? Miss Cheryl, Miss Robin, anybody want to say last words? I feel like having a gavel. <laughs> hey, I just want to say, oh, this has been <laughs> so good, Shelly. Just so good. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't bored. <laughs> so, um, no, just really good. I really enjoyed being in this, this uh, meeting tonight. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. no problem. No problem. <laughs> Anybody yes. else? Yes, Shelly, this is one of your gifts. Uh, 
Yeah. It is definitely yeah. one of your guests. You do an amazing job of being a, a great facilitator, conversation, getting God's word through. Um, so Thank another you. great job. Well done. Um, <laughs> Thank you, and and the perfect ending to this month to to all of our conversations but you do an amazing yeah. job this was, this was a blessing yes it okay. is mm -hmm. yeah starting off with miss naomi she kicked it off and and gave us some some hot topics and hot <laughs> conversation. then we had uh who was next and we had uh miss robin was next miss robin took us to church she <laughs> made you come know, with that bible out i was like okay wait a minute <laughs> You know, Ms. Robin took us to church and then we had Ms. Cheryl. Ms. Cheryl is such a philosopher. She goes <laughs> and she goes into things that I'm like, how did she decipher that out of that? I don't, yeah. the way her mind works, it, it that's why I always pull on her sometimes because she'll post things or or say things. And I'm just like, where, where did she get this stuff from? <laughs> I'm very intrigued by Ms. Cheryl. Um, and then we had Mr. Joe and Miss Faith come together uh, yeah. last week and that tag team duo right there. You just, <laughs> you're gonna get the raw deal from Miss Miss Faith, and you're gonna get that that nice manly information <laughs> from Mr. Joe. And, it's, he just, and he says it, and he might be chastising you, but he chastises you real nice and mellow like. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Joe. <laughs> and then I'm. I'm <laughs> hey, I put I put a, a message in the chat, so I don't want you to think I I wasn't here. I've been here, okay. But Shelly, oh. you did an awesome job. I just wanted to chime in. I enjoyed it. Thank you for breaking it down and putting so much value. Um, do the, you doing the work, girl? That's all. I can yes, say. that's right. You that's doing right. that? Thank and I you see you in Florida. <laughs> you better come on now. <laughs> all right, come to this this Maverick City concert with me. I, hey, Maverick's coming here in July. I told you, Jonathan McReynolds is going to be here. <laughs> He's going to be with us too. I'm telling you, I'm going to be right there. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all have a good night. Yeah. Good night, Faith. All right, y'all. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I believe next Thursday, Miss Marilyn will be back in the house. Uh, she will be doing her thing next Thursday night. Miss Marilyn, if you're on the line, did you want to say anything uh, before we go? before she right quick before she jumps in one of the yeah. things i like about lisa nichols is that she smiles from yes. down in her soul right she has yeah. the most beautiful smile. it's an air to air smile yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. It's, it's so much it, it just says so much about her and she doesn't have to say anything with her smile it is That's incredible right it's and it's and it's all that she went through brought that smile out. She knows what she went through. Like mm -hmm. she said, you don't have to look at my accolades, and none of that means anything. Anything. She knows what it took to get there. So yeah, she's mm -hmm. smiling. It was a lot. It was a it, lot. That story yeah. is a lot. Yeah. I think, and also Cheryl, you, that is so true. It it originates in our heart. Yes, it does. It is in the depths of our heart. Mm -hmm. The smile comes out. Mm -hmm. and, and it's it's so genuine mm -hmm. oh yeah i just wanted to put that in i, I see it the same way it is i'm uh, like i want to smile like that what you smiling for i don't know just smiling. <laughs> she, knows. she knows she knows what our father did for her she knows she yeah. knows amen. yes yes amen well I thank y'all. I love everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. And um, if anyone, let's see, I'm going to call on somebody. Who am I going to call on? <laughs> for the closing prayer. Katambra, are you still on the line, darling? Oh, wait, no, she opened it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Miss Tamara, lady in red. I'm here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That, I'm going to call on Miss Tamara for our closing prayer tonight. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Father, for bringing us all together for this blessed fellowship, but also to lift up you in the presence of 
this blessed conversation and the hosting facilitation by Shelly and overall the sponsorship and the covering but Marilyn. But we thank you, God, for touching each and every woman and every man, everyone who listens to the replay. Thank you, God, that everything, every seed that has been planted throughout the throughout this whole time of fellowship and from this whole month of mending broken pieces and knowing that we can stand and continue to stand and continue to grow and continue to shine your light as we continue to move forward in this life that you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Harlan. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Happy Friday Bye. tomorrow. <laughs> Good night, Shelly. Great Good job. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy, happy April 1st. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to pay them bills. Pay them bills. <laughs> I already got them laid out. They ready. All right. <laughs> Good night. See y'all next week. All right.